build is going well, but Guy needs to keep practicing his hovercraft flying. He decides the best way is going in at the deep end by borrowing a machine and entering a British Championship race taking place the following weekend. But he'll only be allowed to compete if he passes his British Hovercraft Club driving test with examiner David Palfrey. What we're mainly looking for is control of the craft, that somebody's not just going to get in a craft and go a bit mad in it and obviously be a danger to others. The test comprises a number of tight manoeuvres around cones. Also has to demonstrate he can stop safely. Everything went wrong. I hit every cone possible. I nearly wiped you boys out. I ran off the edge of the cars. He will have a few mishaps, but um, he sorted himself out. Hasn't panicked. Still in control. If Guy fails the test. He won't be allowed to race on Saturday. I wouldn't trust me in a wheelbarrow. <laughs> useless. Bloody useless. I've got a bloody clue. Now, I think, hey. I, actually, you did, you did quite well there, cos obviously we're limited on space. So, so really, to actually go in and out of the cones here, you've done quite well. There's a time and place for swearing, and it's there. What a bloody pig's ear of it. Well, Guy, I think you've demonstrated today you've Good control of the craft. A few cones down, but never mind. So anyway, there you go. Thanks very much. Grand job. Well done. Cheers. Dad. Congratulations. And we'll well, see you on Saturday. 100 percent mate. The art of flying a hovercraft is to use your body weight both to help it turn and keep it level. Unlike racing a motorbike on a solid surface, wind and waves are unpredictable and can dangerously pitch the nose into the water or lift it up to the sky. Guy needs to get used to shifting his body weight around quicker than ever before to maintain a balance.